Ooh, hit record. Here we go. Oh, good grief. I've eaten so much peanut butter today. <laughs> Proud of myself. So our full run of Heartwood at the Edinburgh Fringe has come to an end and I can't quite believe it. I've been on this journey from the very beginning of the audition process in March and it felt like at the time August and the Edinburgh Fringe itself was a million miles away and then when we were there for a month it's flown by. That beautiful little sadness that is over because that is how theatrical contacts work. But there's something about theatre and repeating the same piece of, of art over and over again, day to day, with the same group of people, you find your little, you find your groove. The, the silly little in-jokes and things that make no sense to anybody else, just that, that beauty of working in a team of people. And it's kind of like Groundhog Day because you're repeating the same day over and over again with only tiny differences and it's totally up to you. There's little nuances so you can change something about the show just a tad, like, oh, I'm gonna say this line with, I don't know, a different passion. But this is the longest run I've ever done of anything, a month of the same show. And I miss it. I've got post-show blues. I'm having a little moment. I'm so glad that I vlogged the whole experience though, because it means that I get to keep that. I can always look back at it and remember those gorgeous moments. And you can watch it too. Thank you to everyone who followed along with my vlogs. It meant a lot to have you with me on those, those like difficult times when you're stressed, you're gonna lose your voice or I've run out of peanut butter. So I really, really appreciate you guys. I have actually arranged it into a playlist for you so you can watch everything in order from rehearsals to final show. If you wanna see it all, subscribe to me on YouTube. The link is down here or up here or there, I don't know. The link is somewhere around here. Vlogging can sometimes be tough, because this was my first experience of vlogging and I found there's so many beautiful moments that you want to capture and you go, oh, that would have been perfect. But you can't like awkwardly recreate them after the fact. So sometimes there's so many things that I really wanted to share with you guys that I couldn't include because carting my camera around with me all the time is possible, it is my phone. But there are just moments when you... One of the most magical things about this experience was meeting a fantastic young lady called Neve. Uh, <gasps> Neve, if you're watching this. Um, who I'm a big fan of and she is a big fan in turn of the show. Neve came to see the show again and again and again because she connected so strongly with Eleanor, our main character, and the journey and the experience. Performing for them and anyone who connects very strongly with the show, with the characters, with the message, people who come back repeatedly, that's kind of why we do theatre. That's you want you want to move people in some way. You want to change something or challenge something and to know that we did that for definitely at least those two people, Neve and her mum, was really moving and really motivating and I cannot express enough how wonderful it was to meet you Neve and your mum. And now I'm like well enough <laughs> because you're the reason that Heartwood is a show. So this was my first ever experience of the Edinburgh Fringe and it was beyond every expectation I could have set because I knew that there was gonna be loads of theatre happening and loads of people everywhere and flying and this and that and oh, you have to make sure you look after yourself and every little tip, thank you for all the tips by the way that everyone gave me. But what I wasn't expecting was to be so consistently moved by audience reactions every single time. Even though like, I know how good the show is and I know how moving it can be, but every time a new person came to me and said, you move me to tears. In fact, Warren, a wonderful audience member who found us the next day when we were flying on the mile and like, took my hand and said, I saw Hartwood yesterday and I wept. <laughs> and his review is wonderful um, on the website, on the tickets, Fringe website, you can still read our audience reviews. And he says, I am unashamed to say at the age of 45 that I left in pieces. And I love that. I love that adults who don't necessarily know what they're in for. When you, I mean, you take a fly and you take a chance, right? Which is an audience review that somebody else left us saying, I took, um, I took a chance, I took a fly, I went to see something and wow, blew me away. So the consistency of how people were coming and saying, wow, how do more people not know about this? The amount of times that we had that openly said was absolutely mind-blowing to know that people were enjoying it so much and that people were so taken aback by the professionalism and the quality of what we were producing, even though we're still relatively unknown as a, as a production company, as a cast. 
but we smashed it and I'm so proud of the whole team so they're moving so many people to tears we have like grown men like running away my dad came to see it um my dad is you know your average six foot five teacher guy I don't know I don't know what this means um my dad's just a normal guy and when I saw him afterwards oh my god it made me cry instantly I haven't seen my dad cry since I like left for my Philippines contract and to see him in tears again was really moving to know that um, he was so moved. I mean, my dad lost his mum when he was 12 to a car accident. And so I think he can probably relate to those childlike feelings, those childlike feelings of missing, missing a parent that you've lost, which I think knowing that and seeing him crying, I went, oh my God, this is, this is who this show is for. People who can connect and people that relate to this subject so strongly. We had some wonderful professional reviews as well as our lovely audience reviews. Uh, we had the, the Fringe Guru actually came to see us on one of the first days and that was really nice to know that we were on, on the radar of good shows to see uh, and he had some wonderful things to say. I also really loved that the, the Ed Fringe review uh, we came highly recommended which is brilliant. No, that, we couldn't have asked for more. Highly recommended show, yes. One of the craziest things was coming home after the show and Emma noticing on Twitter that somebody had tweeted about Hartwood and it was Benjamin Newsom. Benjamin Newsom came to see Hartwood of his own accord and that was kind of mind blowing for me. And I'm so glad I found out after the fact or I may have like thrown up before we went on stage because I really, really respect uh, him as a casting director and the work that he does. And was pretty freaked out when I realized that he's just seen me perform an entire musical. Although the show is freaking amazing. So I'm really proud of uh, us and myself and of the show and of everything. As you know, this is the first time I have ever been part of or even been to the Edinburgh Fringe. And I'm very glad I did my homework. So there is a fantastic book that I highly recommend if you wanna be in the Fringe or even just get the most out of it as a customer. And it's by Paul Levy and it is The Filthy Guide to the Edinburgh Fringe. And he is very frank and it is fantastic because of that. I learned a lot about what to expect and how to handle every little situation that the Fringe could throw at you. And I mean, it was hectic, crazy madness, la la land, ridiculousness. So having read a few tips and bits of advice in his book, I realised I should ask as many people as I possibly can. What's a good tip? So I did. Number one tip for surviving the Fringe, uh, have some time to yourself. Because if you spend all the time seeing theatre and seeing shows, you are going to die if you have a show. <laughs> so have some time to yourself, even if it's an hour or two, just to get away from the fringe, go back to the flat, relax, and then come back to the actual That's national tip. That's my tip. My What's tip's going to be on the big man. <laughs> I'm going to say uh, socialise. Uh, obviously have time to yourself and make sure you make friends. Obviously. Sometimes just flyering is just handing bits of paper to people, sometimes they won't look at it. If you actually sit down with people after a show, have a drink, have a chat, they might, they're more likely to come and see a show because you made a connection. Yeah. That's what I would say. But also have time to yourself and sleep. Ooh, um, a packed lunch is my best survival fringe tip. I always, I always pack my food with me the night before because uh, it gets a little expensive uh, buying your food every day. So. Yeah, I always, always carry a coat. I learned that yesterday. Yes. Like first day. Always Excellent. Carry, always carry a coat. And a pair of yep. sunglasses. Umbrellas and sunglasses. sunglasses. You've learned that the hard way. Yeah. I have not worried. I had four seasons in a day. So after experiencing it for myself, my three tips for anybody else who's going to the Fringe for the first time next year would be Number one, make a plan of the things you want to see. When you get there, you're overwhelmed. There's so many shows, so many like good, bad, ugly, wonderful, and you're gonna not know what you want to do. Or you're gonna collect loads of flies and say, oh yeah, I'll see all of these things. I've got a month, it will be fine. But time does run away with you and you have got your own show to focus on as well. So definitely make a plan, schedule when you can see different things and make sure you stick to it. Number two, Cast swapping. So you know there is a production of something that you'd quite like to see and you're interested in maybe collaborating with those other performers, well, invite that whole cast to come and see your show and then take your whole cast to go and see their show. It's a great way, not necessarily of making like cash at the fringe, but what it's about is working with other performers for exposure, bums on seats, and also just knowing what other people are capable of and whether or not you might want to work with someone in the future. And it's just a good way of making connections, being friendly. The Fringe is about supporting each other and smaller bits of theatre. So you want to bid those things up. You want to say, oh, I saw something and it was amazing. And I've got to say, 
the marriage of Kim K. If that goes places, which I'm sure it will, watch it. That's not even a tip. I just really liked the marriage of Kim K. That was awesome. Number three. Okay. Number three is flyering. Flyering is hard work, but you have to do it. Uh, a lot of people were, the same people were flyering every day and I was starting to recognize them. But if there are more than 3000 things going on at the fringe, how am I seeing the same small group of people flyering? And you realize, wow, some people aren't flyering for their show. Unless they're selling out every night, that's not a good idea. Vlogging is hard, okay? The bits that I actually choose to show you, I'm already being ridiculous. So imagine the bits that I had to cut out. <laughs> They're not good. Heartwood was an absolutely life-changing experience that I'm so glad I was a part of. Next stop, I am in LA actually recording a feature film with a good friend of mine. So if you want to come to LA with me, please get in my bag or just go to my YouTube channel and subscribe and follow me that way because that would probably be cheaper and easier and less life-threatening for everyone. Anyway, roll the outtakes! Are you gonna miss me, Mum? Yes, I'm going to miss you very, very much. And, and the other bit, see the other bit. Oh yeah, and, and you were gonna threaten me, you're gonna take away my chocolate and crisp allowance. No, don't tell them that. <laughs> oh my God, heart woodies, what the hell did I say that for? So our uh, heart were flirt at me. <laughs> they were ugly, okay? I threw them away. So it's basically my Alzheimer's vlog for when I'm old. We're bad guys, that's what we do. I don't think, I don't think your slice is big enough. Good morning, people. Um, so, bleh. Sorry, B-roll is more interesting if the people you're filming don't know. trouble now. We're still recording so I just want to tell you how angry I am.